So three years ago, when I received my first ever invitation to interview for medical school, one of the questions that all potential future medical school students need to get ready for, for the interview is, why do you want to go to medical school? Why do you want to be a doctor? And it was so frustrating trying to get ready for that question because actually what my answer was, was that I wanted to go so that I could help people. But you can't say that at an interview, obviously, because you're not gonna get a lot of points for a generic answer like that. In hindsight though, looking back at it, I am so glad that I didn't go with that answer because there are so many different ways that you could help people, so many easy ways that you could help people. And I think that is the biggest lesson that I learned this last year. Child, when you're out on your own, a million miles from home, feeling the weight of the world on your shoulders. Child, don't forget who you are, don't lose your head or your... How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca, and I am a final year medical student studying in Canada. I am also, right now, on my family medicine elective. So, how am I holding up right now? It's like that fine line between losing all of your marbles and like just keeping it all together. Now, for those of you that have been keeping up with the vlogs or following me on Instagram, you know that we are in the thick of our residency applications right now. The whole CARMS application process, which needs to be in the firm deadline is January 31st. You also know that I have been busting my butt off lately, trying to prepare for the USMLE step one, and at the same time, trying to finish up all of my research projects so that I could have them completed and represented on my CARMS application, my residency application. So it's seven o'clock in the morning right now, I'm heading into work, but tomorrow will be our charity fundraising soccer game that I have been trying to set up for the last month now. So much went into putting this together, but there's a lot that needs to happen between today and tomorrow, so let's get going. That was an awesome last day at work. I really enjoyed my time at this particular family practice right here. The last two weeks on elective have been really good because you learn that like everyone, all the different doctors run their practice differently and everyone has like a different patient population. Uh, it was really nice. But anyways, now that I'm done work, I need to drive to go and pick up the shirts for tomorrow's soccer game for November. Um, and this is like totally new for me. I was planning charitable events and uh, t-shirt design trying to go in person and finding a good price and printing them out i'm just a med student guys i, I don't do this stuff it was interesting trying to, to watch me struggle through but anyways we're gonna go pick up the shirts now and uh, we'll see how they turned out but i think they're gonna be pretty good Okay, so wait until you guys see how these came out. These are amazing. So these are the shirts. Hopefully you can make them out okay on camera. We got two colors, we got a black one and we got a gray one for the two different teams. Uh, this is my one of my best friends, Frankie, that passed away this summer. I don't really know what I want to say and I don't wanna make this video too heavy, but um, mental health is so important. And if there's one thing that I want to talk about more, it's just checking in with yourself and checking in with other people. and. Uh, making the most of, of the time that you have here. You know, this is my 10th year being a part of the Movember Foundation. 10 years I've been doing it since high school. And I wanted this year to be special, but I, you know, unfortunately I guess it's special for uh, reasons that, that I'd rather it wouldn't be. But anyways, he was, he was an amazing dude. He went down to the States on a soccer scholarship and um, you know, he, he really loves soccer. So that's kind of why we're doing the soccer event tomorrow. Funny enough, I wanted to put the Movember logo on his face, but I thought, he would probably kill me if I did that, so <laughs> we put it just on the shirt instead. But anyways, I'm really uh, excited about tomorrow's event and uh, I hope we get a good turnout. We're just on McMaster campus right now, trying to find the alumni soccer field because I've never actually been to that field before, but the event starts in half an hour. We can't be late to my own event. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> okay. MVP. Team MVP, I swear to God. I thought it was 
So it is Sunday morning, November day 28th. And I don't know the last time that I've checked in with you guys, but we are going downtown right now to Movember head office to meet at least one, one of the people behind, um, behind the whole thing. And uh, really excited. I've never been there before. Hey buddy, how's it going? Man. Thanks Good for coming. Yeah, no worries, man. Thanks for having me. All right, let's do a little bit of a tour. Where are we right let's now? Go. So uh, yeah, we're here at uh, Movember office in Toronto, uh, Mo HQ or, or Mo House, whatever, uh, whichever you call it. Our barber shop first. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a uh, licensed barber, so no shaves or haircuts happening today. I met Chris Hatfield once no in way. 2013. He did a uh, he did a November presentation and event, and I got a little uh, I got a little uh, wooden November block thank you made up for him. If you've got someone in your life growing mustache, give them some kudos, yeah. uh, give them some encouragement. <laughs> and another thing that I always challenge people to do is chat with the guy in their life about their health. So. If they're a young guy, ask them if they know how to check themselves for testicular cancer. Someone like my dad, ask them if they talk to their doctor about prostate cancer. So uh, make the conversation a little bit more normal. This is Shane. He is one of the spokespeople for Movember and he was nice enough to let us come by today and, and ask a few questions. Welcome to the Movember edition of MTV Cribs, uh, seeing our office. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming out, awesome to have you here. Sorry it took 10 years. Uh, no I will say I grew my first mustache also 10 years ago. I grew my first one in 2011, uh, so if you're looking at this one now you can only imagine what it looked like 10 years ago. Um, but yeah, I got involved at the time. Um, not because I had a personal connection 10 years ago. I've had a lot of personal connections since then uh, in the Movember world, but just because uh, being a younger guy, I knew some of the stigmas that existed that kept guys from speaking up about their physical health and their mental health and um, saw that around me in my own friend group, saw that around me in my, in my dad. Uh, 10 years ago, he turned 50. Uh, and that's one of the things we say in the prostate cancer world when you're 50, chat with your doctor about prostate cancer. Um, so I've had that conversation with him for the last 10 years. It doesn't necessarily get any less awkward, uh, but do it every year. Now, for, for people that maybe have never heard about Movember, give us you know, a quick breakdown. What is it that we're doing here? When did the charity get started? Where does some of the, the money that we raise go at the end? I'll try to give the short answer yes. uh, of this, but uh, yeah, this is the 15th annual Movember campaign in Canada. Okay. Uh, so 15 years in Canada, but Movember, origin story of Movember goes all the way back to 2003 in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, started with a couple of guys not focused on mental health at the time, but just joking about mustaches and about how mustaches hadn't really become popular again yet. They were kind of a men's fashion icon statement for a while and then fell out of, fell out of favor and never made it back. So in that first year, uh, they said, let's just spend a month growing a mustache. They did something that uh, surprises me still. They somehow managed to convince 30 of their friends to grow a mustache with them for that month. Uh, so probably a testament there in itself, the fact that it's easier to convince a guy to grow a mustache for 30 days than it is to get them to talk about their health. One thing I will say about the bad mustaches, there's certainly more to November than the mustache, but uh, in, in terms of what I was saying, saying earlier about generating conversations, the worst mustaches sometimes generate the best conversations. And yeah, we, we were chatting about your friend uh, Frankie earlier and, and yeah, I have a really similar story of a friend uh, in, in 2015 who, who took his life way too early and, and fell in the category of, of a guy who um, a little ashamed to admit that I, I lived the experience of, of having lost a friend and then sitting back and thinking I never saw this coming and, and didn't see uh, didn't see some of the signs in, in him at the time. So that's um, that's a big reason why I come back to November every year and, and continue to support um, these 10 years later. Uh, but but you said so many things that are, that are amazing when it comes to mental health, uh, and it's that mental health affects every one of us. Too often when people hear the words mental health, they picture depression or they picture, um, like you said, mental illness, as opposed to thinking of mental health as something that affects every one of us. And, and in our world we say, if mental health affects every one of us, then why can't we all talk about it? Why can't we be bringing awareness to it and, and be more open about chatting about it for ourselves? And, and when it comes to men and their mental health, they're kind of two sides of the coin. One is we're encouraging, we encourage all men to be more open about where they are mentally. Um, I think too often guys see it as a sign of weakness to, to share where they're at. We wanna, we wanna flip the script on that and say, at a moment when someone's willing to speak out about their mental health, that's actually a sign of courage and, and strength and something that should be celebrated. And the other side of that coin is when it comes to everyone's mental health, but, but especially men's mental health, we all have a role to play. 
and we should all be checking in with the guys in our life more and and when we do have a friend who uh, hasn't been themselves or seems isolated or they're not in the group chat like they used to be or they've canceled plans check in with them and, and ask them how they're doing and, and show that it's not just a token ask saying hey what's up you care about them and you're willing to listen and and that's where uh, we can all be doing better uh, for the guys in our lives I kind of want to end this off in saying that you know when, when I look you know, my experiences in medical school, meeting all these amazing patients that I've had, you know, the honor to interact with, uh, and just looking out into the world, my view of things is a very unique one compared to what I had back in high school, for example, just the evolution of myself over the last 10 years. And one thing is constant in, in that, unfortunately, bad things still happen to people, whether that's suicide, whether that's cancer, whether that's depression, and that is not necessarily something that's going to change. But I think that one of the most amazing things is that through foundations like Movember, through the people that support it and just out in daily lives, we're able to do things to make the lives of some people just a little bit better. And whether that's coming together in a community, funding certain programs that are gonna help the people that are most um, affected by these different things, or just saying that, you know, I, I understand that you're going through it and I'm here for you and I'm gonna grow a mustache, I'm gonna exercise, I'm gonna knit a scarf, because I'm here for you. And I think that is the most awesome thing that I've been able to see. All right guys, and that is gonna be it for today's video. The, the main reason why I put this together is because I think a lot of times as students, we think, you know, like, what are you going to be able to do as a student? I think that uh, a lot of people that are spoken to think that, you know, it is the cardiac surgeons that are saving people's lives and the emergency medicine physicians that are really helping people, but uh, they are, <laughs> they totally are, but there is just so much that you could do as a student. And I think even just starting a little initiative like this, getting people together, showing people that they're not alone and doing whatever you can to make your own life and maybe someone else's just a little bit better is so important. And I hope that it's something that we could do more of number one on this channel and number two maybe in your own lives a little bit of a positive fruity message for today's video but there's what it is so guys thank you so much for stopping by today we will see you all in the next one which hopefully isn't too long for now uh, i'll probably get around to it after i finish today's anki cards but uh everyone take care